So like I mentioned in the previous video, I did want to take a look at some of these statistics for the Guangzhou charge to continue our, uh, our, our study on them. Another thing I wanted to point out to uh, some of the viewers of these videos, if you do uh, have an interest in a team that uh, isn't getting a lot of love, uh, let me know and I will uh, you know, try to help out and see if there's a, there's, there's some uh, mutual ground to stand on. Um, somebody had mentioned in a YouTube comment that they were interested in the Guangzhou charge and I didn't feel like I had a good read on them. So I'm doing this video and it, you know, it helps me out and it helps you out. You can get some content out of it and uh, yeah, I get some, I get uh, an excuse to study. So looking at some of these stats, again, check out, head on over to Winston's lab. They have a great tool. Uh, one thing I want to highlight early are some of these ratings for Shu and Rio pretty high. Something that was pretty openly criticized for um, on Winston's lab behalf um, when they first developed the rating system it was kind of viewed as arbitrary, but as the years have gone on, good players have good ratings in, in matches and in, in overall seasonal play. Good players will have good ratings. Um, outstanding players will have extremely high ratings. And uh, above 1,200, I would say, is, is considered, you know, pretty high. You know, getting to that, you know, not crazy, but, you know, upper echelon of, of play. And it shouldn't surprise you that Shu on both Ana and Zenyatta is getting up there. Now, I will say, to contextualize Shu's Ana a little bit, I would imagine, I don't have a direct, I could probably look here in a second. Um, I'll do it later. But I, I think Guangzhou probably plays a good amount of Ana, more than the uh, league average. So it, it, it shouldn't uh, surprise me that the, his stats are so high, but again, high nonetheless. Uh, Zenyatta stats are fantastic. Um, everybody else looks similar. The difference uh, being Hot Buzz, Sombra versus Eileen's is, is quite interesting. Um, one way to look at this is Eileen Sombra could be more f strategically focused, if that makes sense. So they're using him specifically on maps where they intend to play Sombra, whereas Hotbug could be um, flexing on it as a map is happening where they could find it successful and, and that shift could be uh, hindering his play. Maybe he's not practicing it as, as much. Um, what is interesting, however, is the amount of kill participation and kills per 10 minutes correlated to their time to charge alt so they're they're it seems like their damage is pretty equal because it's you know how quickly can you charge your ultimate versus how how they're doing in the kill feed how partis you know how, how how much participation they have in some of these fights in terms of just strict kills it seems like eileen could be going for hmm, maybe the back line a little bit uh, more often, maybe trying to, to one clip a Zen. Um, maybe he's, um, I would imagine, okay. I would imagine Hot Buzz probably shooting tanks more often than not. Maybe Eileen's trying to finish off targets, go for cleanup kills, this, that, the other thing, because it seems like their damage is pretty equal, but their, their targets might be different. Um, but other than that, everybody else is pretty normal. Um, nothing too crazy. Happy's Widowmaker is good. Shocking nobody. Hoppus Tracer is good. Again, shocking nobody. First three kills, very, very important in a team fight. First kills on Winston. Rio has, has a good Winston, looks like, which is good to, good to see. Kib's first, first deaths. I mentioned this in the first part of the video. Um, his, his Brigida is very, very highly touted and it, you know, does not surprise me that his first kills are, you know, above the average of about 6% and his, his first deaths are, are very low, which is fantastic for him. So again, Guangzhou, you can always rely on Kib to, to have a great brig performance in these, these heavy tank metas, which is great for them. Uh, Rio's Hammond dying pretty low. That's pretty impressive. I, I do have to say again, these, these ratings, you can say they're arbitrary, but 
they they seem to paint a pretty pretty decent picture what i did find interesting is uh what some of these team fight statistics look like so um, win percentage wise guangzhou's not bad again above average but uh not bad pretty i would say pretty average uh first bloods above the average good their conversion rate though so the first blood win percentage how often are we winning team fights when we get first blood considerably below average especially when we look at comparisons directly with teams um, the florida mayhem when they get first blood they win 85 percent of the team fights when guangzhou gets first blood they win 81 percent. so 85 compared to 81 i think i might have accidentally read florida's as 81 but they florida wins 85 percent guangzhou wins 81 percent pretty low comparable with shanghai shanghai kind of a new team uh i wouldn't uh hold them you know i i wouldn't burn them too hard on that right it's it's not something that i would hold them accountable for i guess you know they, they've made a lot of late decisions defiant 85 percent 81 percent Chengdu similar huh interesting Boston 84 82 hmm Guangzhou is painfully low Chengdu at 80 Paris at 74 charge at 81 that's not good that's not good I think if I had to guess this points towards uh some communication issues which again wouldn't surprise me this is a team that is coming in a language major you know by and large a lot of the players don't speak so there are going to be some some comms issues there are going to be a little bit of a a disconnect at times first deaths are normal fd's normal everything else seems pretty normal let's check out when we're using our alts and how how those fights turn out so when we're using more alts we're winning great should be the case when we're using the same alts we're losing so fsu is the fights where the similar alts are used fights same alts that's how uh the coders decided to abbreviate it and the win percentage in fights where the charge use similar alts to their opponents is pretty low so we're not we're not playing well even on we're not playing well on even footing we're playing well when we should be playing well we, we should be when we should be winning we are when charge is in the neutral they seem to be struggling a little bit and when charge is playing from behind so the fights where we where the charge use less ultimates seems to be again pretty average but below it um which is again i have to lean on that that comms issues it seems like there there is a a, a game plan disconnect where something's not happening in these team fights where they're playing on even even footing and even from behind that's causing them to lose more fights on average than uh, their other teams to draw direct comparisons again shanghai spark chengdu atlanta funnily enough hmm leaders new york surprising nobody toronto or not toronto i'm sorry vancouver pretty high hmm so far from the stats all i'm seeing is a little bit of a comms breakdown um other than that all the good players are good shocking nobody for the most part um, flexible i would say a lot of uh diversity here but again i think that you can see that throughout the games um should be should be interesting to see them coming into stage two and, and seeing where that that meta goes but going back into the study on rialto let's take a look so so far actually you know what i gotta answer questions let's take a look at some of these questions is is chara considered aggressive let's look at some of these deaths because he's his kills aren't necessarily going to pop up um, when he sets up a boop, that's not going to show up statistically, right? Uh, his time to charge alt. We're looking at fight stats. We need to look at these. Percentage of team deaths, a little bit high. 
is indicative of being aggressive. Time to charge alt, pretty normal, a little bit below average, not too correlative, I would imagine. Kills per 10, it's not gonna show up. First deaths, yeah, he's, he's dying a, a little bit. It's not gonna show him setting up these kills, but it seems like they're, the Lucios that do want to play a little bit forward and set up those kills for his team can get caught out sometimes, can find some some early first deaths, some early first three deaths, and just uh, overall, you know, having a high amount of his team's deaths overall is indicative of him playing a little bit aggressive. Um, let's see if Happy's Zarya is doing a lot of damage. Time to charge all a little bit above average. Good for him. Isn't doing a lot in terms of participation in the team fights, though. Not a lot of kills, not a lot of uh, participation in the kill feed. Damage done seems to be pretty okay, maybe above average. First kills, pretty low. Hmm. So hard to say with him. Is he dying often? Dying often either means that you're positioning poorly or you're being a little too aggressive. This seems that he's doing a little bit of both. Where he is being a little bit wily, a little bit uh, f you know, loose with his positioning and still not finding a ton of value from it. Not doing a ton of damage. He's charging his ult roughly the same amount of time but not finding a ton of ton of uh, picks off of it. Which again, not something you need as the Zarya, but pretty low, I would, I would imagine. Again, average is 6% or 6 kills per 10 minutes. And the PTK 22.9, so almost 23%. Which is pretty low, pretty low. So again, I would, um, this, this for me, at least statistically speaking, and again, this is throughout all of stage one. It seems like positioning is a little bit loose for him. Not finding a lot of success with that aggressive positioning. So seems to be the case that he is kind of aggressive. Uh, Rio, is he aggressive? Hard to say statistically. Um, but if he is, he's finding some success with it, which is to be expected, I would imagine. It's Reinhardt, so... Getting a lot of those kills, which is good, which is good. But Chara, I would imagine, it seems like statistically it's supported. A little bit aggressive, which is fine, just a style. And uh, Happy, I think we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to him on, on that Zarya. So let's take a look. Don't mind me, I'm just going to have a little bit of coffee. It's 6.30 in the morning and I haven't been to bed yet, and I'm trying to get these done. So bear with me, folks. Again, looking past the Ryan. Here's Ryan. Ryan's here. Looking past. I'm going to swap colors here again. Ryan, past the shield. They're going to probably push it to the corner. By they, I mean gladiators push it to the corner, go up and around. We've seen that pretty often, but they barrel through. Bring off the top. Looking at the diva here. Looking at the diva and the Lucio. Pressuring out void. Looking to do a little bit more damage. Is that reflected in the alt charge? Looks like it. Happy's getting a lot more, a lot more damage done. For instance, right. When when I talk about like oh where is where is Happy looking there has to be a decision on whether he's whether he could be shooting the Rhine versus people behind it here Rhine's tucked away this is just normal for him to be shooting the back line here you're not going to be able to chase the Rhine over Brig there for scouting good seems everything looks all right from Guangzhou nothing inherently bad. This looks like the plan was for Happy to grab early. Maybe he felt like he was doing a ton of damage. 
they didn't feel like Decay was doing equal damage and Rio just gets caught out. I feel like if you have this much damage done on your team, you have to abandon that plan because this happens, right? We go for the grav. That's the that's the beginning of the game plan probably here, right? Oh, we're, we're building grav really quickly. I almost have grav. Let's just grav next because I don't think Decay has it, which again, they'd be right. But when you start to take these crazy health lead losses and you're just holding S this entire time. So this is probably gonna be a one fight A, which is really rough for charge. I don't know that they're gonna, they died pretty quick. So maybe they can get back, but it's gonna be pretty tight. Somebody's probably gonna have to come in and touch. But this is usually a two fight map. You can take a fight here and then you normally take a fight here. If you're really greedy, you take a fight here, here and here usually you're investing pretty hard into this fight this third fight but yeah it doesn't look like they're going to be able to contest this is a one fight eight that's really rough and again comes down to that comms issue that we talked about before i want to go back to this fight you know charge has to know that happy has a, a ton of alt built up they want to set up this player on his alt which is great fantastic you're alt tracking very well. Happy's finding a lot of success farming the, you know, farming void. But once you start to fall back, once you're playing on these back foots, you know, you're taking a big, a lot of losses, a lot of damage. You have to abandon it. I think best case scenario for them, we all int in. If you just keep holding backwards, you're slowly going to inch back. And maybe you take a fight here that's fine best case scenario i think i I'm, i've always been a very uh big proponent of trying to burn the time as much as possible i think it's very very important um yes you're feeding a little bit of alt charge but maybe you can pick somebody maybe you deny somebody some more alt charge you know um there are some best case scenarios but if you just slowly walk back take a fight here i think that's the safer option um uh, playing a little bit more aggressively time focused pushing the cart here just kind of like throwing the fight dry pushing it and then reapproaching you know so we so we take a tactical loss here we reapproach take a fight here and abuse the fact that we have you know grav that's a little bit aggressive um what charge could do again the safer option slowly back up forfeit the two fights that you want to keep on a and, and just abuse the fact that we have grav after they've they've healed up. But just going for it to go for it, it seems like Happy's not either not listening or the comms aren't, you know, as as clean as we'd like them to be. And they die. And they only get one fight. So they, they blow a pretty big advantage. They had a huge advantage and it's gone now. It is gone. It is gone. So next fight, they're approaching with a little bit of a sound barrier lead. Great. A little bit of a transcendence lead. Doesn't seem like it'll matter, though. Rally lead to gladiators. Charge will probably build Earth Shatter, barring any kind of crazy shenaniganry. And gladiators have the grav over them. Let's take a look. Hmm. This seems to be a dry call from Charge. Pretty unfortunate boop. Transcendence called. That's weird to me. Hmm. Why are we transing? We 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 know we're on the back foot. Rio's a little bit far forward here. Is it to save him? So if you look up here, draw your attention. He is bashed. Transcendence is just activated. So again, seems like he's trying to save. Seems like Shu's trying to save Rio here. Um, which doesn't in you know in in concept it makes sense like obviously we want to save orion orion's very important but this fight should be a dry fight this this should not be a fight we want to invest into not because kib dies first but 
because you're at such an alt disadvantage from that first fight on point A. Now we're just digging the hole deeper. Where we were even on Transcendence, now we're behind. Gladiators used an ult. We use a more important ult. Does that make sense? Charge, if we go back. Gladiators take this push and are like, okay, you're dry pushing. We're going to use Rally to get the edge. Charge actively are pushing in. Rally's used to buffer some damage and have a a little bit of a better win percentage rally's not a huge alt you use normally use it to see them engage by them i mean the you know the team that's using rally so the team that's using rally tends to want to be engaging but in this case it is a nice buffer in terms of some of these uh dry fights so if if charge is pushing in for a dry fight okay cool we don't need to use sound barrier that's too much of an investment we don't want to use transcendence that's too much of an investment rally's just enough damage mitigation that it's okay and we can eat that dry fight but charge doesn't make this a dry fight they use transcendence which again that comms issue that i keep bringing up these fights aren't panning out the same way that they you you, you know the coaches would want them to so it seems like mid fight calling is a struggle for them as the fights as the game goes on as as the the match you know continues again look at the map score this is map four if i can count We've got three maps previous. This is map four. Hopefully that's correct. Hopefully I'm not doing any kind of caster math here. It is it is late for me. So it's possible. Um, it seems like mid-fight calling. Again, going back to that first fight on point A. We have a Zarya lead. We take a lot of damage. The play shouldn't still be we're going with the Zarya investment. The play should be a little bit more malleable. Okay, you know. Because we took a lot of damage, you know, just, you know, forget the fight, cut it, you know, cut the tape. We don't want to continue with the fight on A. But they do anyways, and they throw away that lead. Okay, fine. We'll go, we'll dry fight next fight, and, and we'll fight them on the bridge. It becomes not a dry fight when you use the transcendence. They're going to be able to take more fights here. They'll probably be able to recontest somewhere over here, which is pretty normal. But the ultimate usage for Guangzhou, be it questionable, goes back to those statistics. It's coordination it seems to be the name of the game with these guys. Most, For the most part, it's not egregious. I wouldn't say it's crazy, but mid-fight calling seems to be an issue. The game plans, leadership could be a little bit better. Happy position to do a lot of damage. Building grav pretty quickly. Great. Sound barrier used to beat the grav. You have to do that because Shu uses ult. And they win the fight. Good for them. Let's take a look. If I had to guess, this is probably on the back of Happy just kind of doing a ton of damage here. Hmm, sound barrier from Big Goose seems a bit aggressive. Big Goose gets caught out. Yeah, fight's over. <laughs> I won't focus too much on, on Gladiators. I don't want to get uh, the message mixed. But so far with Guangzhou, that, that felt like a fight that was gifted. There wasn't a it seemed just kind of like a little bit of a little bit little little bit of spaghetti from gladiators there. Uh, a little little bit of a gifted fight. Let's see. So what do, what is charge looking for here? So sound barrier is the same. Transcendence should be the same. We have bomb shatters the same. Gladiators is gonna have rally. And charge has grav. I don't hate a early grav here to bait out the transcendence and then see what happens with earth shatter. Now you have the 
the coverage that Gladiators is not going to have. So an early graph here would be nice, but Happy is rotating around. Maybe taking the fight here or maybe in here would be pretty okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want an early grab from Guangzhou, bait out the Transcendence, then look for a Shatter play. Don't have to commit to the bomb though. Um, something that I think teams are doing a lot of is every time we grab, we have to bomb. Don't think that's the case. I think you can be a little bit more malleable on where you're using your diva bombs. Um, obviously, it's very difficult for you know a team to be able to do that on the fly, but uh, nonetheless, something that teams could work on. I think using uh, shatter bomb combos are you know an interesting way of uh, being being a little bit more malleable, being a little bit more flexible with them. Using the shatter to actually break a Reinhardt shield. Okay, so we've got out not a bad bomb to be fair. So again, there they get the early grab. Roar uses shatter, doesn't get anything. Doesn't look like they use transcendence. They use rally as well. So this is a this this is a crazy three fight, three alt fight already, and they've only charges only invested grab. They bomb into it. To be fair, I, I mentioned you didn't have to bomb. You've got a, quite a few people here. Charges a little early. Doesn't seem to be an issue. Could have actually been a boop. Hard to tell from the top-down view, but great on charge. Great defense here. Good on them to pull it back and kind of uh, ignore the flubs uh, early on in those fights. So got to get on them. So this fight, let's take a look at the game state so gladiators is probably looking for a dry fight here they invested a ton of alts there that was a three for two loss for the gladiators charge on the other hand can rally in can look for an earth shatter play if you're really trying to be aggressive i guess you could trans transcendence your your reinhardt into be really really aggressive um which is kind of uh I wouldn't say has been phased out, but has been used a lot more sparingly. I think Korea was of the mindset that tempo transcendences are, are very useful and using it to build alt charges is, is, is kind of a tool. But um, as the, the league, as Overwatch League has progressed, many teams have uh, used it a little bit more sparingly, especially some of the Korean teams that have used it more in, in contenders. So again, I think rally in, look for an air shatter play from uh, Guangzhou. Unless something else presents itself, of course. Doing a ton of damage on Decay. Holy. There's the rally. Don't even have to earth shatter. Happy's just doing a ton of damage. Let's just look at the alt charge there. That he starts with compares to what he ends with. Decay, I think, builds 20% alt charge. Happy builds 50. Let's look at the end here. 50 versus 20. The amount of damage he's outputting is crazy. Granted, he does have positional advantage because he has on the high ground for the most of that fight. If we go back and look at it. Um, starts here on the stairs. He's peeking over. Pressuring Decay is now flanking. More passive with the team. Back up the stairs. Drops down and follows up quite a lot it's, he's doing he's doing a lot of damage he is doing quite a bit good that they saved the shatter it's great for them they're gonna have more tools as they enter this fight this fight so we've got trench bears about the same they've got bomb they've got graph again they can they can tempo grab them out i'd look for an early grab get out the transcendence if they don't trans they just lose the fight simple as that you grab them early let them use transcendence re-engage don't have to invest more but um possibly looking for a shatter play again something uh something i would definitely keep my eye on because gladiators Dry fight was pretty bad. Uh, didn't get a lot of uh, economy out of that. Didn't didn't build much there. 
lost the fight without doing much of anything. So here's Happy pressuring Ryan quite heavily. Good mind to keep eyes on the cart. A lot of teams want to play aggressive here. They want to press them because they're split. They're going to stay on the cart. They're going to just play to the positional advantage that they have for high ground here and not just play into the gladiators as they rotate around. They do have a pretty big health. Eh, do they have a health lead? Rio's been taking quite a bit of damage. There's the grab. Shatter comes out. There's bomb. Early charge. Boops in. Good for them. Seems to be pretty coordinated. Their bomb setups are pretty clean, I'll have to say. Seem to be doing pretty well there, and holy mess. We just got a frag fest. What happened there? So Chara gets stunned out pretty early. Happy's just low. Hmm. It's nothing too crazy. Some exit kills from gladiators, you know, keep them uh, with a lot of ground on this map. But nothing too, too, uh, too painful for a charge. Just, just some exit kills. So actually, let me back up, take a look at this fight now. So this is where charge. I want to see Hotba really take a liking to decay here. May eating that grab would be pretty big. Probably stop the point here, or or at least force them to invest a ton of alts. That's gonna make pushing into third pretty difficult so i want to see hop a really mark decay hmm i want to see these support alts because they m charge might be able to temple them out because they have support alts so again um i'm imagining decay grabs there's the trance they throw bomb then comes in the sound barrier and they shoot should be able to live depends on whether or not happy uh, uses his bubbles the wrong way kib gets run on that's pretty rough i think now you call the fight i think you let them alt you let them alt into you to win the fight you should be okay Sound barrier probably was an answer for the shatter. Was shatter used? No, it wasn't used. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it was. Okay. I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong team. Rio shatters. Sound barrier is invested in that as well. Hmm. Kind of an investment. You take first death and you use two alts. I think gladiators could have probably just kited you out. They don't even think they need to grab bomb here. And they trans. And if gladiators is going to just match you on a lost fight, then I guess you take that. Ideally, okay. So this is how I'd, I'd structure this fight. If you could, you know, go back and move these pieces around as they happen. So gladiators is investing the rally in to boost onto Kib to kill him. Charge is already investing two pretty big alts, Shatter and Sound Barrier, to swing the fight. Gladiators have no reason, no no problem. Or, how do I want to say this? They shouldn't feel a need to be able to go in. You're fighting into a ton of shields. They are a man down. Great. Kite back. Not kite back against Coast here too heavily, but group up play you know in this cubby here um, and just kind of wait out the sound bear and then go in and take the 5v6 i don't even think you need to invest many else if you have to maybe grab i don't think you need to bomb in particular um 
I think Rally would have been enough. I don't think you need a Grav Bomb. And then Sound Barrier. Down a bit, a bit much. I think this is a great... Turns out to be a great fight for charge because they get a ton of bolts from Gladiators here. They lose the fight, but they lose it well, which is something that Overwatch has a, a very strange uh, relationship with. But again, comms issues or, you know, those first couple fights on B were, were, were pretty rough in terms of uh, communication. A lot of alts being used when arguably they shouldn't, which is pretty interesting. Other than that, pretty, pretty typical. Aggressive uh, positioning, happy in you know spots to have him do a ton of damage. Uh, tough to see here. Kib gets a kill on Roar, possibly off a charge, if I had to imagine. Great follow-up. You see this happen a lot. You actually saw this happen in the stage final. I think Super ended up charging in onto Vancouver and they pick him early very in a very similar fashion you really don't want that to happen you really really don't want this to happen those those long charge shots are just not worth it it's really not worth it because now gladiators can really play up on you it's good that charge realized this but what should have been a one fight turns into gladiators actually winning that fight they immediately get back on cart they get a ton of space off of it. It's uh, something that Rio's done a little bit. I remember him doing uh, quite a bit of a, quite a bit of charge. I think it was against their. I get. I think. Excuse me. I think it was against Dallas that he charged across Hollywood and and fed a little bit, and that that one was pretty, pretty rough as well. But I think that's enough here. I think we'll get into the next one. I think we've been going on long enough with the stats talk and whatnot. Hopefully this isn't too terribly long and boring. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for part three. And if you uh, like this uh, content, uh, leave a comment, suggestion, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.